Let's learn in this video how to set up a private environment for AKS, Azure Kubernetes Service. Organizations deploying their applications on AKS want to add security to their environments. So they will make AKS a private cluster. Private means it's not accessible through a public FQDN. The only access could be achieved through a machine hosted inside the same virtual network as AKS or a peered virtual network, VPN or an express route. So that adds challenges to how we can connect to that private cluster. In today's video, I'll show you how we can connect to that cluster using an Azure virtual machine with Bastion and leveraging the Azure private endpoint, which is private link service, and also the Azure private DNS zone. So let's see how that works. Let's start this demo by creating a new private AKS cluster within its own virtual network. From the Azure portal, I go to create this new AKS cluster by going to create a new resource. And then from here, I'll choose Kubernetes service. And then we'll have this template that we need to fill in, which I have already done. So we need to provide the subscription name, the new create a new resource group, then provide a name for the AKS cluster. You can keep this cluster preset configuration by default using the standard one. And then we choose the region. It doesn't matter actually for this demo. So you can choose any region that supports AKS. And then I choose the availability zones, activate all the three availability zones, and then choose the latest Kubernetes version. Uh, then choose the uh, keep the node size by default along with the scale method uh, node count and so on next and the node pools section will keep all of this by default nothing to change here actually um, so it's the same for authentication just make sure we don't activate azure active directory to keep this demo simple uh, and of course um, this should be activated in your production systems. Uh, networking here, uh, we go to activate Azure CNI, just uh, it doesn't matter actually to use Azure CNI or KubeNet, both could be used here. Uh, just I use Azure CNI to, uh, to be able to rename the virtual network uh, from the Azure portal right here. So I call it uh, AKS-Vnet. And then the most important section here is security, where we go here to enable private cluster. So we need to check this box right here to be able to use uh, a private IP address to access the AKS uh, API server. And then next you can or not activate Calico. It's, it's not mandatory for this demo. Next we go to integration and here because AKS should uh, or it's better to that it will work with uh, an Azure Container Registry, ACR, so we can manage that authentication through Azure Airbag. So here, from within integrations, if I create a new container registry, that registry will be uh, authenticated with AKS. So AKS can pull images from that registry without giving it the uh, password for that registry because it will be using a managed identity behind the scenes. So here I have already created a new registry, give it a unique name, then keep it in the same resource group as the AKS cluster, that's optional, and then keep it in the same region. Um, this is um, a good practice to, to make sure we have the best performance of uh, ACR. And then keep it with the SKU standard and then click OK. And when we create the AKS, that will also create ACR. For container monitoring, you can disable it if you want, it's not mandatory. And the same for Azure policy, it's not required for this demo. Next, we go to advanced and you have a few options that those are not required. Next, tags, review and create. And once validation passed, we can go to create this cluster with this configuration. Let's give it like four or five minutes for this cluster and ACR to be created and we'll go back later. Now, once the cluster is created, we can go to its resource group, RG Private AKS right here, and we can see the three resources that were created as part of this uh, creation, which are the cluster itself, the virtual network and the container registry. Let's now go to check the node pool resource group. So if I go to private AKS right here, the resource group that starts with MC, let's expand that. Then from here, we can see the resources for the cluster, like the virtual machine scale set, the load balancer, the managed identities. But we see also three additional resources, which are for using private endpoints. So because this is a private cluster, it will be accessible through the private endpoint. So we can see here a new private endpoint resource created with a network interface attached to that private endpoint and also a private DNS zone created for my cluster. Let's check this private endpoint. So it's attached to that network interface and in DNS configuration, you can see again that network interface. 
Let's go back and go now to check the DNS private zone. And here we get that configuration and you can see here the private IP address for that uh, private uh, endpoint. If I go to network, virtual network links, then here we don't have, uh, or we also, we have one link for the AKS VNet because this private DNS zone is uh, hosted on the AKS VNet. So now because this cluster is private, I cannot access it without having a machine that have a connection to its own virtual network. But however, AKS have a new feature called the invoke command, which will allow us to connect to the cluster using the Azure CLI tool. And here is an example of that, uh, uh, of that, how that works. Let's see how, how that works from the Azure portal. I'll go to my AKS and then I'll go to connect to that AKS cluster. Go to select connect, choose the subscription. And then here I'll use the command azaks get credentials to connect to that cluster. I have already logged into my Azure subscription and then I go to get the credentials for my private cluster. Now from here, if I try kube control get nodes to get the nodes of my cluster, it will tell me, no, you cannot connect because this is a private cluster. So there is no direct connection from outside its virtual network. However, right now, if I try with the command az aks command invoke, that will go this command kube control get nodes will go through the Azure uh, API that will be it will have a way to connect to the API server and send to it that command and then uh, send back the response to the command line. And yeah, here it is. We can see our new node pools uh, created for that uh, cluster. This command is useful for debugging and to get an instant access to the cluster and also an easy access to the cluster. But what we would we want to do next is to have access to the cluster through a Jumpbox virtual machine that will be hosted inside uh, in its own virtual network. And that VM will configure it so that it would be able to connect to the private AKS cluster. So let's do that. So in this step number two, we'll go to create an Azure virtual machine within its own virtual network. So from within the Azure portal, I'll go to create that virtual machine as a new resource. So I'll start first by creating the virtual machine and then I'll configure a um, bastion host for that VM. So choose virtual machine. So the starting point will be from here. So you choose whether you want a Windows or Linux virtual machine. Then you complete this configuration right here. You create the virtual machine and then you go to create the uh, Azure Bastion. Uh, I have here, I will put the link for this tutorial that shows you how to create an Azure virtual machine within the Azure portal uh, that have all the steps to help you uh, create these resources for the VM and also for Bastion. Once you have finished creating these two resources, you should have here a new resource group with the new resources for your virtual machine within its own virtual network, uh, the virtual machine itself, and then the Bastion host connection. From here, I'll go to my virtual machine and I'll try to connect to it through Bastion. So I'll go select connect, then Bastion, click connect, and that will open a new window with RDP connection to my virtual machine within the browser itself. Now here I switch it to my Azure virtual machine that will act as a jump box. And from this virtual machine, I have installed the Azure command line, the kube control Kubernetes command line. And I've connected to my Azure subscription, get the credentials to connect to my AKS private cluster. It's now I'm connected, but I'm still cannot actually uh, connect to the private API server for AKS. So when I try here, get nodes, again, it tells me this is a private cluster. You cannot uh, create or you cannot connect to that API server. So let's fix that out. And this step number three will go to set up the connection between the virtual machine and the private AKS cluster. For now, the API server endpoint has only a private IP and no public IP address. To access this API server, we'll need to use a virtual machine that have access to the AKS VNet. This access could be achieved by one of the following four options. First option would be to create a virtual machine inside the same AKS virtual network which is not our case today. And second option is to use a virtual machine in a period virtual network. And that's the option that we'll be exploring. So the third option would be to use express route or VPN connection to that VNet. And then fourth option would be to use the AKS command invoke feature that we have explored earlier with, uh, with uh, the Azure CLI. 
To connect to the AKS from our virtual machine, we will use the VNet peering option that requires two steps. So first step is to create a virtual network peering between the virtual machine VNet and the AKS VNet. So we create this virtual network peering resource in Azure. And then the second step to do is to add a link to the DevBox virtual machine VNet and the AKS private DNS zone. So we'll go to this private uh, DNS zone and then we'll add the link for the DevBox uh, virtual machine so that that VM could solve the private IP address of the API server. So let's go to create a virtual network peering between the VM VNet and the AKS VNet. So we'll go to the one of the VNets in the Azure portal, uh, either the VNet of AKS or the VNet of the virtual network. I'll choose here the one from my AKS cluster. And then we'll go to peering and add new peering. So we'll go to here, peerings. There is no peering for the moment. So we'll go to create and define a new peering for this virtual network. I call it peering VM ACR. And for the, the remote virtual network peering, which is gonna be the one for uh, VMs VNet, I call it peering ACR VM. And then next, we'll go to choose the remote virtual network. And here I select the one from my virtual machine network, which is this one, RG VM DevBox VNet. And then I'm ready to go to add this peering. So we have here two peerings created, one for the AKS VNet, which is the one we see here, but the second one is also created on the remote VNet for the virtual machine. So if I go to that virtual machine VNet, then I go to peerings. Yeah, we should see now that peering will appear from here. Next, we'll go to the private DNS zone to add a link to the VM VNet in the AKS private DNS zone. So let's select it. And then we go to uh, the uh, virtual network links. And then we'll go to add a new link. Note here that we have already a link for the AKS VNet already created. Let's go to add a new link for the virtual machine VNet. So let's give that link a name, link VNet VM DevBox. And then we select the subscription and the virtual network, RGVM DevBox VNet. Click OK to create that new link. Now it's creating. And once that link is created, we can see it here from the virtual network links that will appear right here. Great, now we are all set up and we can connect to the private AKS cluster from the DevBox virtual machine. Let's connect to the virtual machine, connect to Azure and connect to AKS. I have already done that. So now here, switching back to my Jumpbox virtual machine, if I run again the command cube control get nodes, which didn't um, run it successfully before because I didn't have the connection to the API server. Now, if I try again, now, yeah, I get access to my cluster and here are my three nodes in my cluster. I can also go to run uh, pods from there. So if I run the sample Nginx pod, it tells me that pod is created. I can get that pod by running cube control get pods. And yeah, here it is. My pod is running in that cluster. Great, so that's the validation that our virtual machine can connect securely through private endpoint to our AKS cluster. Follow me in the next video where we'll go to continue with setting up our private AKS plus Azure Container Registry private environments, and where we'll go to focus more on the ACR, where we'll go to create and configure access to the ACR using private endpoint, and then we'll go to set up the connection between the virtual machine and ACR, then the private connection between AKS and ACR.